guys, welcome back to another episode of F-Zero ending it all. Last time, Tinsel Steelis lost the Firefield race against Miss Killer. And so, she took her victory. God only knows what'll happen to the task force. So, let's find this out, shall we? I've been waiting for weeks to do this lap. Rick is finally the first of Black Shadow's newest recruits. What would he do? How would Tinsel deal with his menace? Where would, where would the confrontation be? How would Dark Million get involved? All of the answers are about to be unveiled. Well, I've been waiting for this. I've been shredding for this moment since the first day I started writing F-Zero, but here it is. F-Zero GP Legend. Ending it all. Lap 7. I hate to disappoint you all, so... Let's do this! Let's go! Just a few moments ago, Luna Ryder won the Grand Prix in Firefield. Thanks to the prize money, the process was sped up as Black Shadow was working on a dark solution which was originally created by him and Zoda. It was the same type of mind-controlling agent that affected Tinsel as she won the Hovercraft Hub competition. It was experimental, but being very persistent and determined, the demon decided to test it out on the mobile task force. It was proven to be successful as he and Miss Killer watched Rick in a tank react to it. The fluid was inserted and his body began to convulse for a few minutes. Eventually, he became limp. Then the container was drained and the dead soldiers gave him a quick makeover after carrying him out. Rick began to come to, and his body tightened while his hands clenched into fists. The first person he saw was Luna. My dearest Rick, at long last we finally meet again, she said with a grin. His pupils were enlarged as he gazed up at her. Even he was unusually fond in seeing her. This disturbing, yet assuring place. He hadn't actually been here before, though the environment was somehow welcoming in a sense. And then there was Haruka, or rather Miss Killer, standing over him. Rick was reluctant as she gave him a hand. That feeling when he touched her was so... comforting. As if he belonged here all this time. Felt he was at home, reunited with his long-lost love. How I've waited for this day after 150 years. She whispered as she touched his cheek. Interestingly enough, he never flinched, nor did he retaliate. So have I. He's just as stunned as she was. Well, well! Zoda barged in, spoiling the mood. Look, look what the black cat dragged in. Wheeler and Miss Killer sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S Zoda! Rick lunged toward his nemesis. At last his grudge for him hasn't changed. He was still his trigger, pure and simple. That's enough blobbering Zoda! We have just acquainted to our new recruit. Show him some of our gratitude. Thankfully, a vehement voice boomed as it, as it interrupted the impending brawl. Black Shadow scolded, Stay away from him for the moment. We have a deadly mission to accomplish here. And we don't need your meddling. Uh, of course, Black Shadow. The crazy criminal chickened out as he scampered away from them. I'll deal with you later, Wheeler, he said before he emerged into the shadows. Rick didn't listen or acknowledge as he saw the proud, diabolical being face to face. Without hesitation, he walked up to him, and the solution affected more of his body and mind. He had proven his loyalty when he bowed down to him. Lord Shadow. Indeed. Welcome to our headquarters in Darkstar. I'm delighted to meet your acquaintance, Wheeler, as I've heard you are a dedicated F-Zero pilot. I actually had this brilliant idea from Zoda after altering Tinsel's mind. It seemed to have worked for a time. 
so it's lucky we have found you instead, as well as some of your friends. One of the other tanks and the servants saw Jack and the others in their own corresponding containers. You'll be, you'll be seeing them very soon, Wheeler. With your talent, Dark Million shall be so impassable, not even the dreaded bounty hunter Falcon can beat us. He stuck like a finger as Rose, Rick Rose. Oh, have you noticed we've made some rearrangements? A dim ray, ray of light was shown a few feet away, and a ledge the dragonbird stood, although it was not the same. Instead of having its white exterior, it was all black combined with the red from the exhaust pipes in the roof. And on that, there was an etching of the face of a snarling dragon, wearing black shadow's eyes. Plus, the rear had a spike on each side, making it deadly on the tracks. It is the dragon bird no more, Wheeler. Since it's your machine, what would you like to call it? Luna faced him in anticipation, but he was astonished of his new outfit. This filled him with a deep sense of pride and identity. Looking at himself and then the more sinister machine, Rick declared it as the Dark Star Dragon. An admirable choice, Rick. Black Shadow considered the same. There is an assignment that she must accept. You realize there's only one of the task force members that we hadn't inducted yet. Tinsel. She's our greatest adversary yet next to Falcon. You know her well, Wheeler. Yes, Lord Shadow. She's quite a formidable opponent, even when she races. We must cut her strings in her alliance with those other pilots. You know what she must do. His voice deepened as his hand curled and his eyes narrowed. I must kill her. She will never stand a chance against me. I have also hired Miss Killer to do the job. She won't be an easy feat to take down alone. Mission together at last. We'll make sure that Tinsel will be vanquished for good. It'll be our first time carrying out Dark Million's bidding this one. Scrip tightened around her hand, and then a Darth soldier offered him some gloves he'd ever, never seen. He put them on. They were also red and black, much like the Dark Star Dragon. They too had an emblem of his master's face. This looks and feels amazing, Rick thought after he adjusted them. He was so fascinated with all the changes he'd experienced. And better yet, he was reunited with Haruka within the darkness. No pain, agony, nor pressure got in his way. He was almost invincible. Carry out the mission as Miss Killer instructs you, Wheeler. Tinsel must be exterminated that at all costs. Do not hold back as she was a former friend of yours. And handle the Dark Star Dragon well. You must succeed. And only you can. I will not fail you, Black Shadow. You can count on it. He gave a little bow. The demon disappeared and the corrupt couple got to work. Meanwhile, Tinsel was racing with her colleagues on the old Meat City course. This was actually different from the same one she used earlier before her racing green plant. It was modified from the first course in the Night League 13 years ago with landmines and no jump belt plates. This, the turns were a lot sharper this time around. In order to stand a better chance against Black Shadow and his thugs, she figured the best place would be the track used as the first round during the King League. Y'all accepted the challenge. The Unanis Millie thought it was a good way to toughen them up. The Silver Comet crossed the finish line first, then the Mighty Typhoon, followed by the Space Angler, Hyperspeeder, and finally the Twin Narita. Needless to say, it was last since it received the most damage. They each had a sigh of relief now that the race was done. Man, that was a tough one. It sure was. That was quite a decent practice run, Tinsel. Yeah. I thought so, guys. I hope this would help us improve our skills for the next competition, Tinsel stated, still remembering the sword defeat in Firefield. You still need to book well in advance for it. I can't possibly win on my own. Not after last time. 
There was a chirp coming from her communicator. It was Clank, and he was so ecstatic. Tinsel! I hate to interrupt, but you gotta see this! Nah, it's okay. You didn't interrupt anything. What is it, Clank? Did you find something? Yes, I did! You gotta go to the Falcon House immediately! Hurry! It's urgent! The signal ended just before she responded. She took the walkie-talkie and said to the other racers they must head their ASAP. Leon asked, What did he find? Is it from the task force? From Lucy? I don't know. He didn't say. But we must head to the Falcon House at once. He said it was urgent. They soon arrived at the diner, and the tech geek nearly knocked her down as soon as she stepped in. Tinsel, thank goodness! You have to come quick! He showed her a beacon that was emanating from some location on his tablet. It was trapped somewhere in planet Alcatraz in some kind of desolate ice mountain. The signal is emitting from a certain location in Alcatraz. It's close to White Land. The sound of that made her gasp. She would never forget that hard place. My gosh. This must be some kind of SOS signal. C can you make it out with the machine? I can try. Clink scanned the beacon, and eventually there was a match as it outlined the vehicle it belonged to. Her heart raced as she saw it. Ah, uh, it's Rick! I hope he's all right. Rick, you must hurry along, Tinsel. I will, but I'm bringing Leon with me, if you don't mind. No problem. Besides, I can help you track him with my nose. It won't be easy trying to find someone trapped under all that ice and snow. I can handle it just fine. Thanks. She gave him a pet of appreciation. I owe you one. Nah, we're even. Please save Rick, Tinsel, and Leon. I'm not sure how long he'll stand out. Don't worry, he's tough. I should thank you greatly for finally receiving a signal from him. Come on, let's boogie. Right, let's go. The others stayed put since their machines needed some fine-tuning so the comet and the angler were the ones to set foot into the most treacherous area of her troubled past. Since it was her best friend, she couldn't let her fears interfere. Through the work gate, they felt a slight chill. The comet was accustomed to extreme environments, and Leon's fur kept him warm. Still, Tinsel was shivering both from the freezing air and her nervousness. They continued to follow the signal Clank gave them on their locators. They kept nearing the mountain within every second. Thankfully, there wasn't a blizzard greeting them, although they had to watch for any patches of black ice. Almost there, Leon. Hang in there, Rick. Keep your fingers crossed. I hear that humans can't be exposed for too long. It's pretty deadly. His best chance is to stay in his machine. They were so focused on the signal and the slippery ground that they didn't notice an oncoming machine slam into tinsel from behind. Whoa! What the hell was that? Upon close examination from the rear view on the dashboard, which was giving a warning, it was... That's... The Dragon Bird? She was completely astonished as she saw its new, more sinister look. Suddenly, it was upon her. Leon! It's Rick! He's been brainwashed by Black Shadow! What? So the rumors were true, after all. Ah! His craft was also crashed into by someone else. Leon had his hands full with another vehicle hitting him. It was the Moon Shadow, and Miss Killer just sneered at her unfortunate targets. The Dark Star Dragon rammed Tinsel again. She couldn't take any more punishment. You go and distract Miss Killer. I'll take on Rick. She's dangerous. Be careful. I will. Brace yourself, Tinsel. He bared his fangs and faced his enemy. There was no pit areas or speed plates along the two paths, so they had to rely on their wits and luck. Considering he had better handling on the black ice, he had the advantage along with his sharp reflexes. Even though they had the same speed and his body was weaker than hers, as she kept sliding, it was his golden opportunity to side attack her. Then as she was closing in on his tail, he performed a side attack which was more constant causing the moon shadow to collide and go out of control. Thanks to the black ice, it was temporarily out of commission, allowing Leon to catch up to Tinsel and Rick. He headed back as he skidded and sped away. Tinsel was lucky she was able to use her booster, 
but Rick was always nipping her tail. She wanted to get ahead and stay away from him until she got to the mountain. The boost sacrificed some of her energy, but it was very little compared to the abuse the comet endured. Constantly used the Dark Star's strength and kept on bashing her. As she headed straight to the mountain, she finally hit an ice wall, as she spun out from another merciless direct hit. Both her car's body and her own were battered. She was blinded by the high headlights as they refracted from the walls. She was like a deer stunned by them. Closing in for the kill, Rick made a sneer as he tightened his grip on the wheel. <sighs> the sound of his death-bringing declaration echoed throughout the mountain's interior. Time for you and your comet to make an icy tune, Tinsel! Yeah! Rick? You cannot... No! No! Desperate to bring him back and to save her skin, she slammed her fists on the thrusters and unleashed the ice jets, nearly freezing the dragon on contact. It only made a blockade covering the nose of the machine. Still having an appetite for destruction, he opened the hatch and jumped out, just as Tinsel left hers. She couldn't believe what she was seeing as she looked at his malevolent appearance. Using his new shoes... He didn't mind the ice as they had better friction than normal ones. The cold air was nothing to him as he breathed heavily like a dragon, and smoke left his mouth. Tinsel wasn't as fortunate. She was freezing from the frigid temperature and fear. Rick? Rick? With all his might, he charged straight toward the terrified pilot. She covered her eyes, and she hardly noticed Leon being involved in the scrimmage as he wrestled with him. Leon! She cried after covering her vision. She could do it, nothing except watch her two best friends shed their blood. The anthropomorphic leaped and tackled him to the ground. He rolled for a few seconds, then he fought off with his fangs and claws. Rick kept him at bay and kicked him off. Then Leon rolled a bit hard in his arm. Rick managed to sway them with his free arm, and Leon let out a low howl. He tried again, but he missed as Rick moved. He retaliated and threw him aside, toward the spiky structure. He went down on all fours, and a gash was in his lower back. Leon! Tinsel screamed in as much agony as him. Seeing the damage he caused, Rick just stood over him, took out his gun, and said, I will put you down and ease your suffering. Meet your death for Black Shadow! Leon, no! Tinsel got involved as she ran toward the manic detective, making a stranglehold. Rick dropped the gun from his fishy grip, then he grabbed onto her hands and threw her down over his shoulder. His strong hands were crushing her windpipe, but she managed to kick him in the groin. Ah! Vulnerable, she punched him across the face and took him down. She punched him again, and Rick actually stopped when his pupils shrunk to their normal size. She was about to land another punch on him, but he held her shaking hand back, gazing straight into her eyes. Tinsel? She soon got off of him after she looked at his, and they both stood in shock. Is that, is it really you? Rick? Her voice let out a raspy whisper. He nodded in confirmation, but she backed off. No! I... I know it's you, but... You, you're a part of Dark Million, aren't you? I... I was. But you saved me, he said as he was rubbing a swollen chick. His arm wasn't any better as it burned from Leon's deep fang marks. He held it for a brief second. She looked at him skeptically and didn't say a word, still thinking he was playing a trick. Ugh, please, I can explain everything, but not here. It isn't safe. This place was known to house some of the galaxy's most dangerous criminals, including Zoda. This was a secret hideout after Black Shadow invaded here. We must evacuate now, before Miss Killer will return. There was a pregnant pause, his voice softened despite the pain. Tinsel, you have to trust me, just as we did before. Look past the dark uniform and see me for who I truly am, a friend. 
She took a deep exhale, then looked at Leon, who got on his feet and held the wound. It was deep, but at least he wasn't bleeding profusely. Eventually, she accepted. All right. I'll go with you, but I'm taking Leon with me just in case. Fair enough. I'll lead you two out of here. Follow me. The Dark Star Dragon led the Comet and the Angler to a warp gate. He soon materialized in the outskirts of Mute City. Are you sure we should listen to Rick? I could still smell some vial from him. His back was healing thanks to a cloth tinsel head. With the Comet's ice jets, it was always a quick way to recuperate. I used to vouch for him, but I can't be certain. Rick barely heard the conversation, and he became glum. Despite that, he kept his resolve. This is the spot. After they parked near the apartment complex, she told Leon to wait a few feet away while Rick recapped the events. Not much was known about the task force's disappearance. Not even the commissioner knew. But before they went missing, Rick, out of curiosity, wondered whatever happened to his loved one, Haruka. Was she really gone? If so, what happened to her? Could she be working for Dark Million after all? To find the answers, he looked up at the archives from 150 years ago. What he found shocked him to the core. According to the obituary, it was said that Haruka died from a broken heart. At least it, w it was what it seemed. On that night when Rick was involved in that tragic accident chasing the escaped convict Zoda, Haruka was devastated. He remembered breaking his promise not showing up at the Brooklyn Bridge and later make the proposition. She ended up in another accident shortly after Zoda was finally apprehended and banned into planet Alcatran. Rumors kept circling around Rick's fate. Some say he was dead, but not many said he was in cold sleep. Haruka, under her weak breath, actually wanted to join him when he awakens. If he really was in cryo-suspension, which she strongly believed. She was also inactive. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to recover. Her wounds were too great, and the time of death was declared during her loss. After finding out the truth, Rick's heart was broken. Even tears started to fall. Haruka. She's gone. He left the task force behind discreetly, and he lost his will to race or even cope. He kept asking why would his lover do such a desperate attempt to end her life? Why was he the only one who lived through it despite Zoda? Later, while he was hiding away within an empty alley, Dark Million ambushed him, though he lost his will to fight. Luna was there, as was Zoda, but they never killed him. Biorex and the Skull were holding him back. Luna stabbed him with the same knife she used before, making him weaken more. As Rick looked at Luna, he saw a glimpse of... God, don't call me that, she retorted. Then they knocked him out and inserted a dark solution into his neck. It was a coordinate that connected the spine to the brain, making him one of the first servants for them. As it happened, the task force disbanded looking for him, but their fate was still unknown, until he was able to see Jack and the task force at Dark Star, but not for very long. After Rick left in remorse, Tinsel told the tale to Leon. So that's why it happened. He lost his will to fight after finding out about Haruka? What a waste. And his friends must be there, too. He does keep blaming himself. But with Rick on our side, we can find a way to get them back and stop Dark Million. He's our only hope. And that's why you risked your neck pursuing him. It means a great deal to you, doesn't he? You really believe that? I do. Rick is the one who can help us achieve victory. Him and Falcon. She wished that you could recover eventually. You must stay with him for the night. He really needs someone. Go to him. I'll be fine. We'll be waiting for you. Meanwhile, Rick was discarding his uniform and replaced it with the usual red tea. He hoped that Tinsel would freeze it all with the comet's ice jets and soon break the remains, as they were painful reminders of how he used to be. He had never worked for evil before, and through his painful pangs, he knew firsthand how it felt. The guilt, the weakness, and the impulses, the flashbacks and what he'd done. It was clear as day and very intrusive. To clear his mind and rinse the dark, inky residue from his eyes, he dunked his head into a running faucet. 
As he tried, he headed to his bedroom. It was home-like, yet somehow he felt he wasn't there in a good long while. He instantly wondered where he put his memos, hoping they weren't stolen by Dark Million. He had such relief as he saw the portrait of him and Haruka, the golden locket, and the engagement ring safe and intact. He grabbed the velvet case, opened it, and gazed at its luster. Diamond was shining, just like Haruka's eyes did so long ago. Then his mind drifted to all the happy times he spent with her, from just hanging out and dating to her endless support after he won and lost each race he participated in, even the cruise they took. His heart began to soar, until the images in his head became distorted and omniscient. He was in complete fright as he saw Miss Killer replacing her innocence, as well as the accident Zoda caused before he was put into cold sleep. Even the fight, he said, he had with Tinsel and Leon. His head throbbed and his arms stung, and he held the former tightly with both hands, trying to resist the agony and the hallucinations. He shook his head and opened his eyes. The sight was blurry, but he was back in his room again. Then, from the resistance, his body and mind started to weaken. His strength dissipated little by little, and he felt so lost as he saddened, until he literally passed out from the mounting fatigue. Since it was lucky they both shared the same complex with different apartments, it wasn't too hard to find his, even in the dark halls. She opened the door slowly and saw Rick sound asleep on the bed close to the plasma screen. It was inactive for weeks. He never heard her knock. She was so restless and so she wanted to pay him a visit, though she felt a little guilty to barge in with her PJs. Still, she gathered some courage and whispered his name. Rick? stirred and rose up slowly to see who was speaking to him. And so, even he never saw her in that fashion. Can I stay with you tonight? Or perhaps sleep next to you? He grinned and nodded his assent. Of course. He invited her to climb in. He dozed off after a few seconds as they snuggled into their welcoming arms. The next morning, he decided to visit an old friend. She had her answer as he took her inside the dra Star Dragon to the Falcon House. Clank was very enthusiastic to see him as he thought he was gone forever. So did Bert. I'm glad you found him, Tinsel. Actually, he was the one who found me first. Rick asked her to give them some privacy and she and Clank went to another part of the diner while having breakfast. She described the new friends she met. She couldn't wait to show Rick. Still, he lamented over the past ordeal, and with just the two of them, they cannot win. Who said it only has to be the two of us, Rick? <sighs> I've made some friends while you were gone. She explains of Octoman's so-called appreciation at Greenplant, but he never appeared again. She clarified that he's only working for Dark Million and has an outstanding criminal record. Just because he needs some money to support his war-torn family and protect himself from the Milky Way Federation. Rick said he's a target since he's considered a threat, but somehow Tinsel convinced him otherwise as he's a target since he's con As she recapped the Grand Prix a year ago, while she worked with Captain Falcon, she, Clank, and Bert also discussed all the races she and her allies competed in, including her defeat in Firefield. Both of the guys were stunned as they saw the black machine Rick owned and what Black Shadow did to it. A few hours had passed, and she wanted to show Rick her new buddies. I'm glad you made it in one piece, Rick. Me too. He did a fist bump, and Tinsel led the him the way. The kid was still a bit uneasy as he looked at the Dark Star Dragon. He hoped he'll turn it back to the way it was. She later showed Leon and the others to him at the Old Meat City track, where they were waiting for them. Most of the pilots he already knew, except for the two young men, the one with the weird spiky hair and the guy who remarkably had the same name as him. They were all delighted to see the missing champion in person. Rick couldn't be more amazed to meet Drac, Gomar and Shio, Yugi and Joey, Beastman, and of course, Leon. He wanted to have no hard feelings, especially after biting his arm. Rick forgave him, but he wasn't sure about the Fury Cake people since he knew they were criminals. Tintel assured him that they'd been put on probation after bail, just to make sure they wouldn't steal any more car components. 
car component in a desperate attempt for cash-ins. At first, the duelists didn't come to Tinsel's aid since they were too busy fighting darts in the Great Leviathan. Everyone could all relate to the fallen hero's sudden realization. Leon with the possibility of losing the pups at Zhao, Joey with his younger sister, Yugi with his grandfather, Drac with his partner Roger Buster, and Gomar and Shia losing each other as well as their clan. Since they all had a common goal, Tinsel declared they must fight together, and that Rick is in charge. But she wasn't done yet. She also took Rick to see Rodney Stewart, someone whom he didn't know. He was surprised that Dr. Robert Stewart never mentioned his son, one who was a prestigious physicist, but not an F-Zero racer. She made an appointment around the afternoon for an introduction. Ah, Tinsel! Glad to see you've returned. Is the formula safe? Yes, it is. Your father doesn't know it yet. I hadn't gotten the chance to see him. He could still be with Dark Million as their asset. I hope I'll be out of that bind soon. His face brightened as he turned to him. But at least you got Rick back, so there's still hope. As far as I know, he's one of the most promising pilots in the circuit next to my old man. Thanks. It means a lot. Come, this way. Rodney lent him a hand to the examination bed with tinsel close behind. I need to give you a thorough checkup to see if you're still tainted. I was really surprised you were able to snap out of Dark Million's control and not receive the formula my father made. But now's the time. I must proceed at once. He prepared himself for the procedure. Tinsel handed him a syringe with its sharp point protected. Rick started to cringe a little at the sight of it. Sensing his slight alarm, he assured him, Just try and relax, Rick. It won't take long. He used the stethoscope and also examined the arm where Leon bit him. He then scanned it and he was grateful the wound wasn't infected nor had rabies. When the examination was complete, Rodney grabbed a wet cotton ball and applied it to Rick's upper neck. Then he began the insertion. This might feel a bit weird. Tinsel laid her hands on him as he stuck the sharp point into him. <clears throat> the fluid was injected a few seconds later, making him feel temporary pain and some numbness. By the time it was done, Rodney removed the needle slowly from the site and covered it up with a bandage. She asked if Rick was all right. He just gave her a slow nod. <clears throat> Might want to rest before you get the full effect. It's likely your mind could short-circuit if you manage to stay awake. Tinsel, did you stay with him? Of course. Minutes later, a spare pillow and a blanket were brought in. Rick began to feel lightheaded in a matter of seconds as he felt something inside his skull, kind of like a buzz. Then it was almost like an anesthetic as he dozed off. Tinsel could have sworn she heard some mumble about feeling the same thing as he went into cold sleep. Your mind is being cleansed from whatever toxins are left over. Rest, Rick. Wake up soon. Let's hope it'll be another hundred years. It became very still. Tinsel caressed his hands. Thanks for all your help, Doc. It's the least I can do, Tinsel. You'll need him well again. And the other members of the task force. Have you found them yet? Don't give up. Finding Rick was quite a start. I can see why you love him so much. What? How do you... Don't blame yourself. The heart is all that matters. You should pay attention on what it says. Do not doubt yourself and be contradicted. You must follow what's important to you. You might want to tell him. I was nervous at first since he was still suffering from survivor's guilt and the fact that he lost to Rook after being comatose for so long. I believe you should express how much you care for him after he awakens. Always follow your heart, Tinsel. He may have some feelings for you, too. I hope so. Meanwhile, Rick heard a cheery female voice whisper to him, though he couldn't make it out. 
He saw a little light at the end of a tunnel where he felt lonely and hopeless. By the time he looked at it and kept listening to it, he recognized who it belonged to. That voice. He emerged and it began to blind him temporarily until he saw her smiling face. Aruka! He made a warm embrace and he held her tight, never wanting to let her go. Her face turned serious as they broke up. Is there something wrong? Rick, I can be with you only for this moment. We cannot stay here for too long. There is still so much at stake, and you will wake up soon. Luca, why am I here? Couldn't tell if he was dead or not, probably still under the anesthetics. So perhaps he was only dreaming. Rick, you must listen to me. My spirit has left my body 150 years ago. That woman named Miss Killer was a byproduct from Black Shadow. He was the one who reanimated my vessel and transformed it into an abomination. Ah, <sighs> Dark Million must be stopped for good, and the galaxy must be saved. Otherwise, I cannot find rest. You're the only one who can do this, Rick. I know you will. But you mustn't do it alone. Tinsel and your friends are the only ones who are willing to fight by your side. I know. I will save them. She opened and looked into her eyes. This was something that was hard to say. She needs you now. More than ever. Ruka! Do not grieve for me. I've watched over you for the last century and a half. I can take care of myself up here. But you still need someone by your side, and that someone is Tinsel. You gave your love to me. Now share it with her. I want you to be strong as she can help heal your wounds. Please, Rick, give her a chance. And prevent Black Shadow from succeeding at all costs. I will. Whatever you do, do not let Miss Killer intimidate you. Just remember... One day, we will be reunited, but until then, my spirit will always be with you, in your heart. Do not let it be tainted again. She kissed him on the cheek, and then they gave a deep smooch to each other. As she released him one last time, his body started to fade. She said with a smile, Go in peace, Rick. Tinsel was there when Rick woke up in recovery. His eyes cleared and he saw Tinsel laying over him from the right side. He also gazed upon the locket and the ring next to him on the nightstand. He felt Haruka's kindred spirit in his heart, where she said she'll stay. Hence the warmth. His body was almost completely immobilized from the anesthetics, and he was just as groggy. Tinsel. It's great to have you back, Rick. How are you feeling? He hadn't felt this way before, so calm-minded and mellow. Figured it was just the chemicals, and that they'll wear off in time. How long was I out of it? About ten hours. We... actually missed a race. What? I'm kidding. We never missed a thing. At least you weren't asleep for another century and a half. Rick started to raise his hands and move them felt his body getting stronger. He sat up slowly. His head swam a little. Oh, someone has been wanting to see you. Hi, Rick. Clank. Great to see you're still alive and kicking. <laughs> but I have some bad news. One of the latest machines had just enlisted in the next race. The Astro Robin. Jack! Is he a part of Dark Million? I'm assuming he is. You have to enter and get him back. The space angler will be there too. Thank goodness. Leon will really help us out. We have to go there. Where is it? It's actually in Rick's former hometown, in Aeropolis. We can definitely win this one. I didn't know you lived there, Rick. I thought it was in Mute City, or New York. I moved there when I was young. I lived pretty close, actually. Oh, you gotta see it! It's literally transformed! 
I practiced once in the Ruby Cup last year, and I loved it ever since. The courses are like 30,000 feet above, and the view is just dramatic as you cruise through them, even alongside those mega skyscrapers. This place is incredible. Did you know it is being run on a supercomputer? The Mother Q is the central unit that provides the community in an ideal living environment, and its skyscrapers can regenerate and breed new ones, suiting their ever-increasing population. Rick was undoubtedly enthralled by this. Couldn't wait to see what it's like. I hope this would help you. I hope this would help you appreciate our time a bit more. It already has. It was nightfall by the time they finally left the hospital around 10 p.m. Ronnie wished the trio luck and reminded Tinsel she must use the syringe on any task force members they come across. Do not let my father know about this. Please, keep it safe. It must not fall into the wrong hands. We won't. The young steward successfully made a replica of the formula so she could use it multiple times. Rick noticed the Dark Star Dragon was missing as it wasn't in the same place where he left it. Clank admitted that while he was asleep, he called Tinsel and some of her friends to give him a big surprise. Silver Comet was docked in the lot just a few feet down. She confirmed it was true in what the prodigy did, and he wasn't the one who hacked into it, but repaired it. In the garage at HQ, some parts of the Dragon Ghost replaced those from the Dark Star Dragon. To Rick, it was pretty much the same. The white body was back, and the portions with the creepy colors and designs were scrapped away. We've been through a lot together. It feels like... so long ago. Clank managed to tweak its settings and restore it to how it used to be. Rick was very astonished that it had decent components from the dragon bird and the dragon ghost. Now you got the best of both time periods in one machine. Yeah, I really like this. Thanks, Clank. No problem, Ricky. Glad I can help. I really appreciate you returning to our side. I can't wait to give it a test run. Well, it's kind of late, don't you think? It's already half past ten. Ugh. Besides, spending all these hours at Rodney's place can take its toll. It's such a grind. I can see that. I should get going. You best be careful, you two. Dark Million might be looking for you guys. Good point. I'll try and enhance the safeguards around here. We really need some place to set up shop. Tinsel thought for a second to invite Leon, Beastman, Drac, the Duelists, and Gomer and Shion here, but she disregarded the idea as the headquarters were meant for task force members only. She found a comfortable couch to lay on. After he made the safety protocols, about an hour has passed. Rick saw her rest once more. Then he went in the closet and laid a thick blanket on her. Hmm. He continued to watch over her. Everything will be all right. I will stay with you so you can rest. He promised to protect her. While she slept, Rick was like the night owls. He stayed up until the crack of dawn. The next morning was the day for the big race as well as their training. In a rope list, Tinsel met Rick in the garage, fine and dandy. Ready to give the slightly modified dragon bird a spin, Rick? You bet, Tinsel. I'm back and better than ever. That remains to be seen. Meet me on the track. They wound out of a multiplex, and Rick was nothing short on being overwhelmed by this amazing aerial metropolis. As they closed in on the course, the machines ascended higher and higher, until they were slightly above the clouds. There were also some advanced planes and hover cars flying around the gorgeous scenery. According to Clank's research, Rick as a kid actually lived at the location before it was named Aeropolis back in his time. Silver Comet and the Dragon Bird arrived on the track, and it was a one-on-one -on -one race. He and Tinsel were both enamored as they whizzed through the thin metal track using the numerous speed plates. They also needed to watch out for lane mines, although if they hit one directly, they could get a boost. It was incredibly exhilarating when they used the single jump plate on the side as well as the drop they came across. Not even the dirt roads hindered the thrilling experience. 
They competed who would complete the course the fastest, using all the gimmicks in their boosters. It didn't matter who won, and they made sure they weren't too reckless where they would fall off course or crash into a nearby machine. They knew in advance those weren't for show. They made three laps, and at one point, Tinsel could have sworn they were flying as they kept leaping off the ramp with a sudden boost. Just how a comet and a dragonwood bird should. Soon enough, it was over. Both machines stopped, and the pilots were ecstatic as they attempted to calm themselves. Wow! That was incredible! I hadn't had this much fun on any of Zero Track! We're definitely gonna nail this one! I couldn't agree more, Tinsel. By the time they collected their bearings, he told her about Haluka. I remember racing with her. We two had some fun times together. Really? She used to be a talented driver as well? What was she like back then? She was known as the Racing Queen back then. They competed against each other, but only during practice runs. They never did it during the Big Apple tournaments unlike today. He also said that he fell in love with her as they had so much in common, including racing. She was fascinated that he was both a talented competitor and police officer. He met her when she was 21. Her mom was a fashion designer. Her dad was a diplomat. They grew closer and closer as they saw each other more even during races. She was the one who carried him forward when he won or even lost as an amateur. It was no wonder that Black Shadow recruited her rather than just bringing back someone from his past. But being with Tinsel reminded him of those times. They were so similar that maybe... The alarm chirped on the Dragonbird's dash, interrupting his reverie. Oh, we should get going. The next race is about to start. We cannot be late. I'll be right behind you, Rick. And so they were off. They both hoped that things wouldn't take a turn for the worse. Especially for Jack and the remaining members of the task force, Rick feared. <sighs> Robles is one of my favorite tracks. Dark Melon's Trip is known as Dark Star. It was brainwashed by Black Shadow, and this was a homage to Dark Star Dragons in Indian League Football. And, of course, his uniform is similar to Shao Kahn without the cape. <clears throat> chase is on will be played during the chase, as well as the White Land theme. For that, promised land, blah, 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 blah. So far, I think this is one of my favorite laps in this fic. I was looking forward to have Rick reunited with Tinsel as well as have some insight from Haluka's kindred spirit. I think the relationship is really starting to bud here. I figured it was a cool idea combining the parts from the dragon bird and ghost. Which, if you've seen Rex stay off, you would know. So Jack is next. Will Tinsel, Rick, and Leon succeed, or crash and burn? So there you have it, F-Zero fans. And this is the Ekron Writers signing out. Sorry it took so long, but hey, I had a lot of information to cover. So ciao, everyone.